The 2017 draft class is the best class we have seen since 2004, and with Ben Simmons missing the first season of his career, making him a rookie by league rules, the Rookie of the Year race for the 17-18 season was one of the most stacked races in many years. It certainly beat 16-17's race, where the two candidates were Dario Saric and Malcolm Brogdon. Donovan Mitchell, a surprise star out of the gate, helping to lead his team to the playoffs in an incredibly tough Western Conference. Ben Simmons being a flashy playmaker with incredible athleticism and size, and Jason Tatum, who is a very efficient scorer for the first seeded Boston Celtics. For the 2018 class, I don't expect the level of talent to be as high, but I do think the competition for the Rookie of the Year award could be even more neck and neck than 17-18. DeAndre Ayton, the first pick, could be the Joel Embiid of the Western Conference. Marvin Bagley is a fantastic athlete for a four. Luka Doncic, who with his accomplishments overseas already has a damn near Hall of Fame resume. And there are a few other guys drafted below these guys that have a legitimate chance to win Rookie of the Year as well. But my pick for the 2019 Rookie of the Year is Kevin Knox. Now before I give Kevin Knox a whole bunch of praise, I first want to say, dude what the fuck. Kevin Knox apparently said that Kevin Durant and LeBron James are the two best players ever on media day, in that order. He thinks that Kevin Durant is the best player of all time. I don't know if he's just a mega fan or he has a bias towards people named Kevin, but he's on some nut shit with that one. Anyways, here's why I think Kevin Knox will win Rookie of the Year. Knox coming into the draft was considered to be a bit of a project, the scoring potential was clearly there, but nothing about his game is polished. Doesn't feel like he's great at anything in particular. He had the perception of being a project player. Something that Knicks fans seem to hate because just like the previous project they drafted in 2015, they booed him. In the case of Kristaps Porzingis, who the Knicks took fourth overall, he ended up being not quite the project that he was thought to be. He only averaged 14 and 7, but he showed flashes of being a star, and 14 and 7 is good for a rookie. And he would have won rookie of the year if Carl Anthony Towns wasn't so fantastic. And I could very well see the same thing happening for Kevin Knox. I don't think he will need as much development as most thought. Knox was notably one of the most talked about players in the summer league. He put up averages of 21.3 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 2.3 assists, shooting 35% from the field and from three. Now, first things first, the overall field goal percentage is not ideal, but it should be mentioned that he shot a lot of threes, which has a lot to do with the lower overall percentage. But but I do believe that his percentage will be better in the NBA. When it comes to winning Rookie of the Year though, shooting percentage isn't emphasized too much. What's really the main focus is point production. He also has a 48% true shooting percentage, which is okay, still not good, but it looks a lot better than 35% from the field. I think Knox is the only rookie, barring something out of the norm happening, like another Donovan Mitchell situation, Knox is the only rookie that I see breaking 20 points a game this season, or I should say potentially breaking that. And that's not because Knox is more talented than a lot of the guys previously mentioned. It's because he is in the best situation to put up those numbers. Let's go down the list. DeAndre Ayton, possibly the most talented player from this draft class. He was a big time scorer in Arizona, averaging 20 points per game in college, but here's why I don't think he will be doing that in the NBA in his first season. Basically, to summarize, Devin Booker. Ayton just simply isn't going to get the touches that are required for him to put up big numbers. I imagine that he will be a second or third option, but I see him averaging something like 14 and 10 in his rookie season. I could see something similar from Marvin Bagley. Luka Doncic is another guy who I'd guess could be the best player in this draft, him or Ayton. He's the hardest one to guess what his stats will look like because what the Mavs offense will look like is hard to pinpoint. He could be the main option, he could not. He could be more on ball or he could be more off. He could be score first or he could be pass first. It's hard to say because how he will play within the Mavs offense will determine his Rookie of the Year case. After that, Jaron Jackson Jr. will be a role player year one, same thing for Wendell Carter, and I do think Trey Young and Colin Sexton will have a chance because they are in similar situations to Knox. Trey will get as many shots as he wants, Colin won't, but he could average a lot of assists playing off of Kevin Love. But here's why I think Kevin Knox's situation is better to win the award than any other player. Porzingis is going to be out a majority of the season, or half of it at the minimum. So when you look at the Knicks roster and remove Porzingis, who do you have to score the ball? 
The leading scorers of the Knicks last season after Porzingis were Tim Hardaway Jr. who averaged 17 a game and Enes Kanter who averaged 14 points. And there's Michael Beasley at 13 but he's gone now. Being that Hardaway was really inefficient as a second option I have a feeling that for the sake of development and because they don't have many better options Kevin Knox being the main scorer seems like the way to go. He's also in New York. Being a member of a big franchise always helps. So Kevin Knox is going to the NBA as a rookie who I believe will surprise a lot of people with how polished he is early. He's the only player with the circumstances for him to get the numbers without any restrictions besides for Trey Young. And being in New York, he's going to get a spotlight bigger than you can really ask for. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this. And cue the outro music. What's it, Brian?